Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 65. Hey, if you want to download this workbook file or the PDF file, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to talk about hypothesis testing about population difference when sigma is known. Now, last video, we did confidence intervals when sigma was known. This video, we want to see hypothesis testing. Now, last chapter, chapter 9, we learned the five steps for hypothesis testing. And guess what? It's exactly the same here. The only difference is we're going to be testing the difference between mu sub 1 and mu sub 2. Now, we'll set up the hypothesized difference as d sub sub 0. And that means we can have, just as we did last chapter, two tail, one tail upper, or a one tail lower test. Now let's look at this one right here and see how we set it up slightly differently than last chapter. H sub 0, null hypothesis colon. And then we set it up as a subtraction. So mu sub 1 minus mu sub 2 less than or equal to the hypothesized difference. That means the alternative would be H sub A colon, the difference between the two population means greater than the hypothesized difference. Now, just as we mentioned last video, it's very important to get the order of whatever population and sample you set up as the first one and the second one. You've got to get it right throughout all of the calculations, because oftentimes we'll be doing some calculations starting with the first one and the second one. Now, the reject region and the fail to reject regions are exactly the same as last chapter. Here's reject the null and accept the alternative. Here it's fail to reject. Now, down here is going to be our test statistic. Hey, it's z because we know sigma population standard deviation. Now, we're going to take from our sample the difference between x bar sub 1 minus x bar sub 2, and we'll subtract the hypothesized difference, and then divide it by our standard error. That will give us our value to compare against the critical value, or we can calculate from the z, which is number of standard deviations, we can calculate p-value. Now, if we go to the next page in our PDS, there's all of the variables defined. And we're going to see something cool here. We're going to do this with formulas. Then we're going to see there's a totally awesome built-in feature called z test two samples for mean. Now, I want to jump to page 18. Now, on page, it says 16 on my PDF, but it's actually 17 written on the slide. We want to look at a general note about hypothesis testing. If we would like to conclude that one mean is bigger than another, we have to be careful in how we set our alternative hypothesis up. So if we want to test whether the first population mean is greater than the second population mean. Then when we get to our alternative, because we're going to set it up 1 minus 2 and then compare it to our 0, notice if we're asking is 1 bigger than 2, if we did subtraction bigger minus smaller, well, that would come out positive. So when we set up our alternative, we want to say, hey, the difference between these two is greater than 0. Then we can do this at the end after we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative. And in fact, we will have this example in just a moment over in Excel. Hey, let's go over to Excel, and here's our example. Remember, we did this example, two cities, Bradford and Kane, last video when we built a confidence interval. But here, we're going to do hypothesis testing. So two cities, Bradford and Kane, are separated by only the Conwango River. A random sample of annual incomes from both cities was taken. Sigma population standard deviation is known from past data. Bradford standard deviation for the population is 6,000. Kane is 7,000. At an alpha of 5%, can we conclude that Bradford's annual income is more than Kane's? Now, remember, what do we do? When the question pops up, that's going to help us define our alternative hypothesis. We'll put the comparative operator here, and then whatever comparative operator we have here, we'll just do the opposite for our null hypothesis. Now, I'm going to come down here to the hypothesized difference. We're just going to assume that to be 0. So I'm going to put that right there. And remember, just as we did in chapter 9 with hypothesis testing, we set these two up. And both of them will be compared against some number, in our case, the hypothesized difference. So I'm going to highlight both cells. And in the active cell, say equal.
click on that 0 F4 to lock it, and Control Enter to populate those two zeros down there. Now, we could type these in, but you know, how do we do Excel? If this was ever to become 5, we'd change it in the one original place, and it would flow through to the rest of the spreadsheet. Control Z. All right. Can we conclude that Bradford's, and notice we have to consider sample 1 or sample 2. Bradford is sample 1. So I'm thinking Bradford's annual income more. So our symbol would go like this, greater than, pointing towards mean of sample 1. So I'm going to take this and put it down here. Oh, but wait a second. Before, remember what we said? If we're considering a bigger than question, if we get mu sub 1, that's the first one, our first sample, that's Bradford. If we had bigger minus smaller, this would come out positive. So I want to say, is this number right here that I'm thinking might come out bigger, is it bigger than 0? So that's what's going to help us determine how we put our comparative operator. Now I'm going to put a space and then greater than symbol Enter. If we know the comparative operator from the alternative, we simply come to the null space less than. And remember, equal sign always goes with the null hypothesis. Now, step two, alpha, 0 0.05, enter. Step three, sample, calculate, draw a picture, calculate, test statistic. Well, you know, we can just sketch out a picture. I have all the details from the final. Uh, calculations here. But as soon as you see this, remember, it's pointing to the upper end. So we know it's going to be something like this. Our normal curve align everything above. It's going to be reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative. Everything below is going to be fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so that's our general sketch. Now let's come and calculate. Well, first, Bradford known standard deviation for the population is going to be 6,000. Tab, cane is 7,000. Enter. Now we can calculate our sample mean for sample 1 equals average. Now I'm going to click in the top cell. And watch this, Control, Shift, Down Arrow. And so many times in this class, I tend to do Shift, Enter, because it puts it in the cell and jumps up. But I, I think I like something else better. Let's try Control, Backspace. Now what's different about Control, Backspace is that it jumps back to the active cell, but keeps the whole uh, surrounding spreadsheet in view. And I just want to compare this average. Control, Shift, Down Arrow. If I did Shift, Enter, yes, it's polite. It puts it into the cell. But notice then I have to use my mouse to scroll up. So I think I like Average, Click, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace. All right, and now another little trick. If you have a simple aggregate function, you don't have to put the closing parentheses. When I hit Enter, it puts it in for us. Equals count. We need to know the sample size. Control Shift Down Arrow, Control Backspace, and then Enter. Now we need to calculate population variance. Why? Here's our formula. We saw this standard error or standard deviation of the sampling distribution of differences. And inside our square root symbol, we're going to have to take variance of the first divided by sample size of the first plus variance of the second divided by sample size of the second. Now, this formula here seems complicated. When we get to the t-test, man, it's going to be incredibly complicated. And we're going to have to use this little variance divided by sample size many times. So we're setting ourselves up for efficient Excel spreadsheet construction. We want to put both of these calculations in the cell. So later when we have to calculate that, it's easy to just go grab these two values. So population variance. Well, I'm given standard deviation. Take that and square it. Now, if you think about this earlier in the class, we calculated variance and then did square root to get to standard deviation, right? Here we're doing the opposite. Now, variance of population 1 divided by sample size 1, that's that little bit right there, and Enter. Now we can continue our calculations for sample 2, average. Click in the top cell, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace, and Enter. Equals count to get sample size. Click in the top cell, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, 
control backspace and enter. Now we can calculate population variance. We were given standard deviation, so we simply square it and enter. Now we can calculate that little bit right there equals Variance from population 2 divided by sample size 2. Enter. Now we've calculated for sample 1 and sample 2. Now let's come down here and continue step 3. We need to calculate standard error. That's the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar 1 minus x bar 2. Oh, that's this little bottom denominator part. So ready? Equals square root. Now notice square root. And inside, we're simply adding. But we have the two amounts right next to each other. So I'm going to use the sum function and add broop, those two parts right there, close parentheses, close parentheses, and Enter. So that's our standard error. Now we can calculate our test statistic. That's this up here, z number of standard deviations. The difference, oh, and that's the point estimate. And we didn't actually calculate it in a separate cell like we did for confidence interval. But no problem, we can calculate it in our numerator and subtract the hypothesized difference and then divide by the standard error. So you ready? Equals, open parentheses, I'm going to take sample mean 1 minus sample mean 2 minus, and we actually don't need the parentheses. We can just do straight subtraction left to right. So we get our hypothesized difference, close parentheses. So that little bit right there is the top, divided by, oh, we already calculated our standard error, and Enter. That is our test statistics, number of standard deviations to the right on the upper end. Now we can come down and step four. We can calculate our critical value and then compare it directly against this. And then we'll calculate our p-value based on that and compare it to our alpha. So you ready? Critical value is that, and it will be determined by the probability. So if we have 5% on the upper end, this is 95%. So equals norm dot s. And remember, dist gives us probability. Inverse gives us a value, so we want inverse to get our z critical value. 1 minus 0 0.05, close parentheses, and Enter. Wow, so 1.6 compared to 1.9. We visually can see it up here. There's the hurdle, the critical value, 1.645, and the calculated test statistic is out here. So we're out in this region. We are going to reject the null and accept the alternative. If we do it with p equals norm, and it's still norm.s, but we want probability, so we use the dist. That z means our test statistic, comma, and now we want cumulative. Remember, these functions always go from negative infinity up to some point. Oh, but wait a second, that would give us the probability all the way up. And we want it on the upper end, so I have to go 1 minus Control Enter. Now, comparing our p value, that's the probability of getting 1.98 or greater, right? From that line up, all of that area is the probability. That's what we just calculated. Because it's a one tail, we don't have to double it. We just directly compare it to alpha. It's smaller, so we reject the null and accept the alternative. Now our conclusions. And notice up here, we mentioned this. If we have, this came out positive, so we say, is that amount greater than 0? This is what we accept. If we did a little algebra, mu sub 1 minus mu sub 2 is greater than 0. Well, if we added mu sub 2 to both sides, we would be left with mu sub 1 is greater than mu sub 2. So we can conclude this way. Because the calculated test statistic is greater than our critical value, we reject the null and accept the alternative. It is reasonable to assume that the mean income in Bradford is more than Kane. Because the p-value is smaller than the alpha, we reject the null and accept the alternative. And we say the same thing. It's reasonable to assume that the mean income in Bradford is more than Kane. Another way to say it, the sample evidence seems to suggest that the mean income in Bradford is more than in Kane. But don't forget, we do run a 5% risk that we have rejected the null, even though it was true. Now we want to look at a second way to make our calculations. And we're going to go up to the data ribbon, over to the analysis group and data analysis. We've used this feature many times. 
Down here at the bottom, we have a bunch of options for two sample tests. We want Z test two sample for means and click OK. Variable range one, I'm definitely going to click on the label at the top, Control Shift down arrow, Tab, and then I want to get the variable range two. Control Shift down arrow, tab. The mean difference, we have to type this in. The variance for population one, standard deviation was 6,000, so that makes it 36 with six zeros. Tab, population variance known for population two, 7,000, so it'll be 49 with six zeros. Tab, I definitely want to say labels because I included my labels up here. There's our alpha output range. I'm going to click and maybe select cell uh, E41 and click OK. And just like that, there are the averages. There's the sample size. There's our calculated test statistic. There's the critical value on the upper end. And there is our p value. So, certainly a much faster way to go. Now, in this class, I might ask you to do either one. In general, if you're doing individual tests many times, certainly that is the fast way to go. As we've mentioned before, the advantage to formulas is oftentimes you may be dumping data here, multiple data sets, and you want it just to automatically calculate. All right, so in this video, we did hypothesis testing for the difference between two population means. When we come back next video, we'll talk about confidence intervals when we don't know sigma, and we'll have to use the t distribution. All right, see you next video.